Well, hello there, everybody. Hi. Oh, gosh. Oh, these masks, huh? <laughs> Uh, hey, my name is Ash Andrews, and I'm the executive director of the Pittsburgh Center for Creative Reuse. We're located in Pittsburgh, maybe about 40 minutes away from Greensburg. I'm actually from Greensburg, so hello, friends and family who may be watching. Great to see you. Um, creative Reuse is so excited to be part of this uh, you know, creative tutorial extravaganza with the Westmoreland Museum of American Art. We have so many fun DIY upcycling ideas that we want to share with you all. Um, and so we're just going to jump right into the first video here. Uh, it's featuring Cami Brady, our shop manager. Um, she's going to just show you a little bit about a, a collage tutorial. It's a free form collage and a couple of materials that you might want to have on hand include a backing board of any type, cardboard, uh, fancy mat board, whatever you've got, cereal box, uh, a paintbrush, some water, school glue, or Mod Podge, one of my most favorite materials, uh, scissors, and some interesting paper media. Maybe the funnies from the paper, or maybe uh, a comic book that you've already read 400 times you don't need anymore, or maybe a vintage magazine that you found in the basement. Who knows? Uh, something cool to cut up that no one's going to get mad about. Yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, thanks for coming on this uh, collage adventure with us. I uh, hope you have a really great time, and I hope you come visit us at Creative Reuse, uh, perhaps after this pandemic is over. Have a great time. Hi, everyone. My name is Cami Brady. I am the shop manager and volunteer coordinator at the Pittsburgh Center for Creative Reuse. And today I'm going to be showing you how to create a freeform collage art piece. All of these materials are very easy to come by. In fact, we have most, if not all of them on our online store right now. The first thing you'll need is some sort of backing board. I'm using Bristol board, but anything similar will work. Then you'll need a paintbrush, some water to clean it off, Mod Podge or school glue. If you're using school glue, I suggest watering it down a little bit. You'll need scissors and some kind of paper media to cut up for the collage. I used mostly vintage magazines and catalogs, and I've already cut them up as you can see. The first thing you're going to do is put down a generous layer of whatever adhesive you've chosen to use. Try to smooth down any areas where it gets too thick because you don't want it to cause any bubbles or wrinkles in the paper, especially if you're using older paper. Then you can start placing the pieces of paper that you've cut out wherever you want them to go. I usually plan my collages out a little bit in advance just so I have a general idea of where I want everything. Um, also don't worry about lining it up with the edges perfectly. I usually trim the whole thing at the end so the edges are really nice and crisp and so I don't have to be too concerned with that while I'm actually working on the piece. I got most of these images from a home decor magazine from the 1970s. The home decor magazines are really nice because they show you a variety of color schemes for like living rooms and things like that. So you can plan out really how you want your collage to look and make everything coordinate really well. We have a ton of knit and crochet and sewing magazines at Creative Reuse, and it's a great source for models um, so that you can cut them up and put them in your collages just like this. I am making a three-headed monster girl just hanging out in her 1970s living room, and I think it's looking pretty great so far. One thing I really love about freeform collage like this is it's almost like the more ridiculous you make it, the better it looks. Like, there's no wrong way to put these pieces together, so it's a very low-anxiety art project. You almost can't go wrong. Now to finish this piece off, I'm going to add an inspirational message to the side that says, make time for you, which I think is a really good reminder. Now once you have everything glued down and you've given it a minute to dry, you can take either a ruler and an X-Acto knife or a paper cutter, or even just some scissors, 
and just trim each edge a little bit. If you like how the edges look and you don't want to trim them, don't trim them. There's no wrong way to do it and it's your art project so it should look how you want it to look. Now you'll just want to add a final top coat of whatever adhesive you've been using over your entire piece. This will seal everything in and make sure that the corners don't start to peel up or that things don't start to detach in any way. Um, it'll also just protect your whole art piece and make sure that it lasts a nice long time. And now this piece is complete and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Like I said, this is a really nice low pressure art project. It's very freeform. It doesn't take up a lot of space or time. And all of the materials are very easy to come by. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, most of these materials can be found in our online store. Go to pccr.org and click the tab that says online store. Then hit the button that says shop now. We have so many cool materials and we're constantly adding new things, so I hope you'll check it out. Well, I don't know about you, but I really like the addition of the third uh, and the second head. Uh, I was not expecting that. That was a uh, pretty genius, Cammy. Way to go. Um, I really think it's important whenever you're making art or craft or anything creative at all uh, to stretch that imagination and see where it will take you. Uh, you don't have to do what's standard. So that was an amazing uh, craft tutorial. I really hope that we get to see what you make. So please uh, hashtag creative reuse uh, so we can see what you're up to out there. Um, and Later on, we're going to have another video segment with uh, Ziola, our shop assistant, showing you about how to make some DIY notebooks. So stay tuned.
Well, hello again, everybody. Uh, this is Ash Andrews, the executive director of the Pittsburgh Center for Creative Reuse. We hope that you enjoyed our last video about freeform collage, and we hope that you enjoy this upcoming video about upcycling your notebooks. So if you got a notebook sitting around that you don't really love all that much, maybe it's got someone else's logo on it, or it's all scratched up, or who knows, you know, just know that you can redo it. You can upcycle that thing. Uh, make it something that you love or something that you'd be so proud to give away as a present. Um, we've got a couple of holidays coming up, uh, gift-giving holidays, so if you'd like to keep your costs down low and your creativity up high, then why not try this next tutorial? Um, so Ziola, our shop assistant at Creative Reuse, is going to be taking you through step by step how to upcycle an old notebook of yours into something beautiful and something to be proud of. So some of the materials that you might want to have on hand um, are acrylic paint, paint palette, paint brushes, water, a medium or varnish of some sort, and a notebook that you don't mind painting over um, and turning into something spectacular. Um, and if you make something with this tutorial, please hashtag us so that we can find it later and tell you how amazing you did. So you can use uh, our hashtag, which is hashtag creative reuse. Um, you could also tag us the little at sign at creative underscore reuse if you're on Instagram. On, on Facebook, it's that slash sign and Creative Reuse Pittsburgh. Just search for us, you'll find us. Um, so again, thank you so much for being with us and we really hope you enjoy this video. Hi everyone, my name is Ziola and I'm a shop attendant at Creative Reuse. As some of my coworkers could tell you, I have a slight obsession with notebooks and sketchbooks. So I thought it would be a good idea to show you what I've been working on lately. People donate their old, boring, or branded notebooks to Creative Reuse all the time and they end up going to our bulk section for 50 cents, and that's where I got these ones. My favorite thing to do is transform them into something that I'm actually excited to use or give as a present. My plan for this video is to show you how I transform objects that might be considered boring into something that can actually be super cool and unique. For my example, you will need acrylic paint, a paint palette, paintbrushes, water, varnish, a notebook, and whatever else you want. I got most of my materials from Creative Reuse. So for the first step, we're just going to want to paint over the cover of whatever notebook you found. As you can see in this example, this notebook had kind of a swirly logo on top of it. It was something sciency. And so I'm just working to add layers and layers of paint over the logo until you can't see it anymore. I already know that I'm going to be making a portrait on this notebook so that it will go with the other examples I showed because they are all the same exact branded notebook that I found a bunch of copies of in the Creative Reuse bulk section for 50 cents. To start out my portrait, I used a blue Prismacolor pencil to create an outline, pretty much just mapping out where I'm going to be painting so I don't just dive in not knowing what I'm doing. I usually start out with a middle ground skin tone color and then I add in the shadows, which helps shape out the face. And slowly I add the different variations, working my way up to the highlights. I haven't taken a painting class in many years and I don't paint very often, but this way seemed to work for me. Then I add on the shirt and the hair. That's one of my favorite parts. I don't really feel like it's complete until I add some, you know, cute little leaf details and then my favorite part, which is the outline. This is like my signature final touch. I find making an outline around the things I do really satisfying and it's just a nice way to add some bold details. And then also I add glitter from Creative Reuse because I love glitter. And to finish it off, I add a glossy varnish, which adds a protective layer to the notebook and also makes it shiny. 
And who doesn't love a good shine? Clearly I do, because I added so much glitter. <laughs> I'm not really expecting people to do exactly what I did in this video, but I am hoping that it will inspire you to revamp or add your own special touch to something that you don't want anymore. If you're planning to get rid of it anyways, then there's really nothing to lose. I challenge you to repurpose these items in some way, and sometimes the most fun way to do that is to transform them into custom works of art. Thanks for watching!
Creature Capers. I'm Dave, and this is our holiday episode. This is a little glove puppet that I made. I found this little Santa Claus guy in a in a, a hobby shop or a thrift shop years ago, and I stitched his strings to the fingers on his glove. So when I go like this, he dances. I'm gonna put him away. I'm gonna put the trash where the trash is supposed to go, which is over there. I'm gonna put this chimney up there like it's on the rooftop. And then you and I, all you folks at home, oh, it's so hot in here. I put on uh, extra layers of clothing because it's winter time now and it's really cold outside. But now that I'm indoors, it's really hot. I'm gonna take off this uh, sausage scarf Put it over there with my pork chop coat and my snowshoes and wipe off some of the spits here. Whew. All right. Now we're back. Happy holidays. Uh, happy holidays to whatever holiday it might be. Might be Christmas, might be Hanukkah, might be Kwanzaa, might be Clay Creaturemas, which is a holiday I just made up right now. Now, some of you are old time fans, long time listeners. Uh, and uh, some of you are first time viewers. So you might be wondering, what's this guy talking about? What's the deal? And what is this? How does it work? Well, it's called Clay Creature Capers because I'm the host of Clay Creature Capers. I'm an expert clay creature maker. You can see this Christmas alligator right here. It's an alligator. He's made from clay and he's, got a, he's wearing a Christmas hat. It's that easy. But. My ideas are limited. I make mostly Christmas alligators or little black cats. What I really need are ideas from audience members like you. I rely on people in here in Pittsburgh, out in San Francisco, people in the middle there in Kansas, some folks in Canada, up in Toronto. That's a lovely city. I've never been there. They all send me their ideas and suggestions through the chat. Sometimes they're on Facebook. Sometimes they're on YouTube. Sometimes they're on uh, Zoom. A lot of times they're on Zoom. And they'll say, hey there, Dave, you clay creature making expert. This is what I want you to make me. And what we're doing today, the mission folks, since we have established that we are in the holiday season and that this is a special clay creature capers, we're gonna think about those who may not be getting a clay creature for Christmas this year, or for Kwanzaa, or Hanukkah, or whatever it might be. Uh, clay creature matopia, uh, whatever, whatever, whatever religion you might celebrate, there are those who just aren't gonna get as much this year, and there are definitely a lot of people who aren't gonna, sadly enough, get clay creatures this year for the holidays. So you and me, my friends, are gonna work together to make the most awesome clay creature that we're gonna give to somebody who wasn't expecting to get anything this year. Now they're gonna get something that they didn't ask for or expect and that didn't even exist. All right, what's my first suggestion? Can you make me a clay PS5? Wow, man, well, we can make a clay PS5, but it's not gonna, this is, this is from 
uh, what's this? Ki what's the kid's name? Harvey in Cleveland. Hey, Harvey in Cleveland. Thanks for watching the show. A PS5 with a hat on it. All right, sure, I'll make a PS5 with a hat on it. First thing you gotta do is remember thinking to myself, what color are PS5s? I think they're black, aren't they? I don't know, they're pretty much just a rectangle, right? So this is gonna be, now you folks at home watching this show, you're thinking, wow, this is gonna be, this is gonna save me a lot of money this year at, uh, at Christmas. I am, my kid's gonna say, won't you get me a PS5? Oh, I want a PS5. I want a really expensive video game called a PS5. Oh. And you're going to say, I don't want to spend all that money on that. Here, have this little clay rectangle instead and use your imagination. It's just the same. So now we've got a PS5. That's going to be part of it. Let me get my clay tools out. What do they look like anymore? Do you still have to blow into video games? Like if they don't work? If the cartridges, you guys know what cartridges are? Or tapes? Here, am I in the right zone? Let's get in the right zone. Now we're in the zone. So look, we'll put buttons on it. We got buttons here. We'll have to put a spot right here. This is where you put the uh, the tape in, right? I don't think anybody knows what tapes are anymore. This is where you put the video game cartridge. Or look, this is where you blow into it, like this. Come on, come on, come on. My video game machine isn't working. Blow the dust out of it, and then you go like this. Wait, wait, don't move. It's working. All right. Thank goodness it's working. Man, that was a, that cost us a lot of money. If we would have broken already, I don't want to be the one to have to go tell Pat what happened. Hello, you there, boy. Me, sir. Yes, you, my good fellow. What day is today? Today, 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 today. It's not going to work out well. All right. Um, so we need, what else are we going to add to this? So far we got a PS5 and we need an Abraham Lincoln with some antlers. Abraham Lincoln with some antlers. That one's coming from Tiffany in Charleston, West Virginia. Very good. And that looks like we've got one coming in from, who was it, Lily? We'll get back to her. All right, where's my Abraham Lincoln? Where are my Abraham Lincolns? We're going to make a tiny Abraham Lincoln. What if we do this? What if we, since we're making a creature, here's what we'll do. I'm going to bring out my creature stand. And we're going to set up the creature stand. And we're going to put the PS5 aside for now. And we're going to give... Abraham Lincoln usually wears black. Everybody knows him in that black suit. But we're going to flip the script. We're going to give... Honest Abe. Was he really honest? Hard to know, right? I hope so. Let's hope so. All right. We got blue. We've got blue pants. Now we need... Well, I think Abe's a lot taller than that, too. We're going to stretch his legs out. That's the one good thing about clay. You can look at it and be like, you know what? We made Abe Lincoln kind of short. We'll just stretch him out. Abe doesn't mind. It's getting shin splints. Oh. All right. We'll give Abe a nice skinny midsection. Abe was a tall, skinny man. At least to the best of my memory. I might even I might even remove the table because Abe was that tall. There we go. We'll put Abraham Lincoln's PS5 right here. We're going to give Abe, this is Abe's casual wear. This is Abe's video, Abe Lincoln's video game. I would watch that on YouTube. Abraham Lincoln's video game review. Watch Abraham Lincoln play video games and look perplexed and wonder how it all works. Because he's from a long time ago when they didn't have video games. You know what we're going to do? We're going to make this... Abraham Lincoln with a PS5 for a head. And I got to give him a nice big blue brim. Oh yeah, we're looking good, Abraham. I would watch that. I would, that's, that's another show I would watch. 
I would watch a science fiction show starring Abraham Lincoln with a PlayStation 5 for a head. It would be like, maybe that was, I don't know, maybe the premise of the show is that some kid goes off to college and his roommate is Abraham Lincoln with a PS5 for a head. What luck. What a crazy twist. Okay. So we have BS5 Lincoln in the house. Uh, a lot of people would say Abraham Lincoln was a serious guy. He didn't play games. PS5 Lincoln, totally different deal. It's all about games. It's all you can think about. Because he's got a PS5 for a head. Now, uh, we need uh, more suggestions from you clever creative kids, or even if you're a grown up person watching this somewhere in some lonely living room in the United States, and this is your, this is, this is, uh, your fun, and you say, hey, this guy's giving bat wings. Oh, cool. I think I even have some wings. Who's that? Who did that one come in from? What, someone someone in, our, in our online audience. Lily. Lily in Chicago. Thanks, Lily. This is a great suggestion. You're a good kid, and you come from a city that has really good pizza. At least that's what I've heard. All right, look. Check it out. Lily, good suggestion. Now, we've got us. Anybody who walked in here right now and said, What are you guys doing? We say, Isn't it obvious? We've got an Abraham Lincoln in the blue suit with a PS5 for a head and bat wings. Don't be silly. Don't play dumb. You knew what it was as soon as you walked in. All right, what's next? What other, what other kind of stuff can we add to this? Now, this is going to be, if I got this for Schmushmus or whatever the holiday was, I'd say, holy Schmushmus, thank you so much, Pop Pop and Mima and Uncle Pete and Cousin Steve and Little Billy. All of you, thanks so much from the bottom of my heart. All right, this next kid has a great suggestion. He's taken in a very different direction. And he said, why don't you go ahead and give him a pitchfork? Oh, the old sticker, right? Well, I have uh, a whole bunch of orange clay here. I don't say anything wrong with uh And that's from, uh, that one's from, that suggestion is from young Michael from Pittsburgh, which is where we are. Good job being from Pittsburgh, Michael. It's a nice place. They're crazy about their football team and their sandwiches and their clay creatures. We get a lot of support out this way from kids like Michael and the institutions that seek to support him and his creative endeavors. All right, let me move this. Oh, oh no, sorry, Abraham. Things got a little rugged there. Things got a little hot and heavy and I got uh, pushing things around too much. Let me just do one little adjustment here. All right, this Abraham Lincoln starting to look pretty, pretty heavy duty. He's the real deal. If the if things might have turned out, if the original Abraham Lincoln would have uh, been like this, things may have turned out differently. That's all I'm saying. I'm going to leave it at that. All right. And then somebody else says, um, oh, okay. The kids are saying, we love, we love Abraham Lincoln. P PS5 Lincoln, I should say. Don't change a thing. They say, leave him right like he is. And now they want me to make, it looks like a kid sent in a, 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 a suggestion saying, make a Tyrannosaurus to fight PS5 Lincoln. It's all on PS5 Lincoln. <laughs> all right. Well, I don't have a T-Rex, but I'll make one right now. As a stand-in, we'll have this piece of broccoli.
I, I don't know. My money's on PS5 Lincoln at the moment. I don't know how much. I don't know how scrappy a piece of uh, a piece of broccoli could be. Okay, and that last suggestion for the Tyrannosaurus came from a young person named Dixon from Springfield. That's great. Springfield. Springfield could be Springfield, Massachusetts. Who knows? We can't say. We can't legally tell you where, where this where this kid is. Actually, don't worry about it. Stop thinking about it. Wherever wherever that kid is, they're fine. These two, Dixon, don't just don't tell anybody else where what you're doing, where you are. You're here with us. We're nice, safe people. We make clay creatures and do wonderful programming like this after school, during school, even sometimes instead of school. Well, hey, don't put that on me. I, I just showed up and said, I've got this idea. Hey, you want to make some clay creatures? And they said yes. They said yes. Yes. All right, get out of here, Broccoli. Now let's give this let's give this guy some give this T-Rex who's looking a little chubby, which means he's probably pretty successful. Cause he's out there chewing him up, you know, he's doing what he's doing what he's doing what he does. Or who knows, I mean, geez, I don't know, I wonder if there was a pandemic during the dinosaur era. And like if they had to like the dinos like the dinosaur leaders were like Everybody has to stay home. It's be safe. Don't crowd around tar pits. Don't. <laughs> Make sure you put a leaf over your mouth. And then the T-Rex was like, I'm not, I'm not wearing any leaf on my mouth. I'm a T-Rex. You know where I'm from, you know how I do it. You think I'm gonna be some kind of guy who's like, like, oh, well, I wear a mask. I'm not, I'm afraid, I'm afraid of some little thing. All right, what next, now what? The T-Rex needs boxing gloves. It's Lily from Chicago again. Lily with the good ideas. All right, we're gonna give the T-Rex some red boxing gloves. T-Rex is a little bit short. I might have him stand on a garbage can. Here we go, T-Rex. You get yours when you're gonna, you know. <laughs> These kids are great. I appreciate you all tuning in tonight. Really smart suggestions from all over the country. It's great to see at a time like this, people from all over with different ideas and different concerns and needs and things they're worrying about. And who knows, you know, we've got Dixon in Springfield, we've got a kid in Pittsburgh, a kid out in San Francisco. These are all different types of people worried about different stuff. But we can still come together and say, let's put together, let's make something really cool. Like a PS5 Lincoln with bat wings and a trident who's going to fight a, who's going to fight a T-Rex with boxing gloves. What else do we need? What else should we do to add to this beautiful, because think about it, someone's going to get this for Christmas. Or for Kwanzaa, or for Squishmas, or whatever they whatever they're into, um, or just like for like a nice surprise during the holiday season, and they're gonna be like, "Dude, what is this?" We've got somebody who's wrote wrote one, two, three, four, five times in a row in great big letters: pizza, pizza, pizza. Pizza! Pizza! Uh, that was a suggestion from Wendell out in Oakland, California. Out in sunny California. All right, Wendell. I happen to love pizza. And I know how to make a pizza real quick. I'm gonna put these guys, I think, here and here, right? And you can see my hands here. You can see my hands like the pizza man. I've even got a mustache like the pizza man that I grew specifically because I was gonna be making clay pizzas. You roll out the dough like this, okay? 
Yeah, today, and you spin it, whoosh, 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 throw it in the air, oh, and you lay it down, pow, like that. And then, what's next? You kids know what's next. It's the sauce. Put the sauce on the pizza. Otherwise, it would be horrendously dry. It would be like eating a piece of cardboard. Sauce, sauce, sauce. Putting sauce on the pizza. Little sauce here, little sauce there. Sauce in your hair. Don't get sauce on the floor. And then we need some... Some... Uh, oh, we need cheese, man. Where's my cheese colors? Here, here we go. Cheese colors. I need a bin called cheese colors. Welcome to Cheese Colors. That's a new show I'm gonna do. No, I don't ever watch that show. All right, now we're gonna put what pieces of pineapple on here. Okay. Wait, maybe maybe we'll have this is um a person who can't eat. Call in now. Type in, and we'll give you extra bonus points if you know what's it called when a person can't eat cheese. Oddly enough. It's a kid, the kid with the right answer is from Wisconsin. <laughs> Who would have knew? Bethany up in Wisconsin said that's lactose intolerant. You are correct. And we are going to send you a free lifetime supply of Pepto-Bismol for getting that answer right. Bethany, good job. All right, so we've got pineapple. Oh, we need anchovies. All right, I think I'm going to make just one really big... Oh, no, somebody said they hate a pineapple. Well, pineapple... Hates, well, hate's a strong word. Pineapple's an even stronger word. Think about that. Yeah. I want that on my tombstone, I think. My, my tombstone pizza. I wonder if, wow, imagine if there are any real tombstones in the world that are shaped like pizzas. That would be really cool to see. Okay, one giant anchovy. Can you see that? Oh, oh no, my pizza stuck to the table. So we've got pineapple and anchovies. A delicious fish. How delightful. I wonder what time my mom's coming to pick me up. Oh, we're getting close to that time now. Put mini horses on the pizza. Wow. Is that a... Is that a hipster band? Back when I used to go see concerts, I went to see a band called Mini Horses on Pizza. And they were awful. Mini horses. All right, mini horses. Wouldn't that be, well, is it a mini horse or is it a pony? Or is that, you know, is it too soon? Hey, have any of you ever been to Assateague Island? That's a real place. I'm not, I'm not using a swear word or anything like that. There's a place in Maryland in the Chesapeake Bay called Assateague Island where there are wild ponies and I don't think people were even allowed to go there anymore because they were allowed to go there for a while and they, they acted wilder than the ponies they acted like they acted foolish in front of the ponies and the leader of the ponies said you have to go alright so we've got a small horse ant sized horses exactly Now send it on, oh no. One of our viewers said, send it on fire. We can't, we are not allowed to use open flames in this building, but we're gonna send somebody over to talk to you and just talk, talk things through, you know, because we're all in this together. You're our buddy and we're in it, we're in a, we, have, we, we support you. And um, it's just, yeah, we're not letting anything on fire at this point in the show or probably any on any of our shows, to be honest with you. We may use a fog machine. We have a fog machine. That's kind of like starting a fire. But also different because it's safe. Make the planet Saturn. Wow! The planet Saturn. Who knew? This is getting wild. I'm almost starting to feel like we have enough content. But I'm just being, 
I'm just being pushed to see if I can keep, keep how long I can keep this going. Alright. Saturn. What does Saturn look like? Saturn's the one with the ring. Or is that no? No. Yes. Saturn has rings. Rings, lovely rings. But what are those rings? What is that? Is that gas or are those uh is it rocks? Ice. It's ice. It's pop rocks. Everybody knows Saturn is surrounded by pop rocks and Pepsi, which makes it incredibly dangerous to fly through. Really bad for your stomach. Really harsh. Look at that. All right, kids. Let's do an assessment, okay? Let's check our work. You know, in math class, they say, show your work. Well, we're showing our work here, and uh, I think we've done a splendid job, to be quite honest. We've got PS5, Batwing, Trident-carrying Lincoln. We've got this little tough guy, T-Rex, with the boxing gloves. He's only the O'Tall, but he's got tough guy intentions. And we've got a pineapple... What's the fish called? The uh, anchovies. We've got pineapple anchovy and tiny horse pizza. And then we've got the planet Saturn. Well, I'll tell you what, if I was expecting no clay creatures and it was going to be a sort of sad holiday season without little objects like this, and somebody showed up and said, hey, you know, we were thinking of you and look what we made for you, I would be thrilled. Uh, so we'll see. We'll follow up. I appreciate all of you people at home, all of you kids, you friends and families, young and old, who tuned in from coast to coast. You are truly the most. Thanks so much for your ideas and suggestions in creating these beautiful clay creatures. This was Clay Creature Capers holiday episode. I am Dave. I appreciate you, and I'll see you next time. Where's my stuff? I'm always missing my stuff. Okay, good job, kids. See you next time.